Hi everybody, it's Kevin at Bear Creek Honey, and uh, I'm doing a, an update today on the uh, the German hive bottom that I posted the video about about a week ago. Um, I said that I was going to uh, be tweaking uh, the design, and uh, that's exactly what I did. Um, I've got six of these made up. Um, I'll be the first to admit that I am not an expert carpenter by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm the type that can cut a board twice and it'll still be too short. Uh, this was a very challenging project. It was a little bit more to it uh, than I anticipated it being, just because there were so many different parts and pieces to this and I kept having to change out my table saw from my uh, single blade to my uh, dado blade and then um, changing out my radial arm saw to my uh, uh, to a, uh, uh, a dado blade for uh, carving out the, uh, uh, the handles on the sides of the boxes and uh, just there was just a lot of and, and there was just a lot of little pieces uh, to this puzzle I guess of, of a project um, I'm happy with how it turned out, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm looking forward to using these boxes uh, because of their versatility in the spring. I uh, can't wait, to be honest with you. Um, but I've got five of them made up, or six of them made up. Uh, the, uh, the six, number six was the most difficult, and I, and I honestly don't know why. I cut all the material uh, you know, I cut six boards, I cut six of everything, and uh, for some reason it fought me the entire way, and when I got it all together and I just put a, a box on top, uh, I had ended up having a half an inch gap on the, on the top box, and somewhere along the line there's something uneven about it. I've measured every board, every board is exactly the same size, every board um, is put together the exact same way. I, I just haven't figured out why uh, it's not level. It just, uh, it's baffling. I put a straight edge on it. I still can't find any hump, but nonetheless, when I put the box on, there is literally a half an inch gap. Um, so I can't use the one box until I figure out what the problem is. But the rest of them turned out damn near perfect, um, if I do say so myself. I did want to show you the changes uh, from the first box that I built to the last boxes that I built. Um, I did tweak quite a bit of it uh, to make it more structurally sound and uh, I just wanted to show you uh, I guess the end result. Uh, like I said this project was just a lot more uh, time consuming than I had anticipated. And probably because, you know, when I was, like when I was cutting the, the uh, handles in the sides, um, I used that opportunity to cut handles in the sides of um, 16 nuke boards, or, you know, sides for the nukes. Uh, things like that, which obviously ate into my time, you know, uh, you know I was painting the, the, the hive box and I ended up painting all my uh, bottom boards and, and uh, nukes to top and bottoms uh, also so uh, I got into other projects as well and that probably ate into a lot of time but it was a lot of head scratching trying to get things to fit just right uh, a few mistakes that I made here and there um, don't know how or why um, I, I did it but you know like I said I cut it twice and it was still too short <laughs> Uh, number one, the number one thing that I changed the difference between uh, the first design and the last design. Remember, I told you that I I, uh, I went with the premise that the boxes in the video that I had watched the, the uh, on the German beekeeping uh, appeared to be a, a medium box. Well, I cut my box that that box six and five eighths deep but then I rabbited out the bottom 
and put the board in down 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 in the bottom. Well, that took up three quarters of an inch of that six and five eighths inch depth, uh, which made made it a lot shallower. Um, now I could still fit plenty of things in it. Uh, you know, at least a, you know, probably a gallon and a half, two gallons of, of fondant in, in the right container. But uh, my next design, I went with, uh, I wanted six and five eighths clear. Uh, so I went with seven and three eighths total depth, and then I rabbited it out three quarters for the bottom board, so that from the from the bottom, from the top of the bottom board to the top was. Uh, six and six and five eighths, uh, so that gives a, give, gives us an extra three quarters of an inch of space in the in the hive box, and uh, and there's another reason I did that as well, and and I'll show you that in the video. Um, the rest of it um, is pretty close to the same, but I but there was some some differences, and I want to show you those differences. Uh, I got a box set up over here. I'll show you. Okay. This is the uh, the hive bottom right here, and you can see I've got uh, uh, the screen front in, and that that that's the first thing that I'm going to show you. Did it slightly different, a uh, little simpler way of going about it. Uh, I did just butt joints on the frame, and I did not go with a backer on the screening. You can see that I just stapled it in, and that you know this isn't going to take too much of a beating. Uh, these screen fronts because they're going to be you know it, only time you're going to use them is uh, during transport or uh, like when you're uh, pulling honey supers and you want to stop robbing in your apiary you put these on and then you go about taking your supers off and uh, doing your thing and then when you're done taking your supers off you can pull the screen and and then and then go so those are the only two times really that you're ever going to use this screen front um, the, as you can see, I'm, I'm just missing the clips. You can use bent nails uh, to hold this in. Um, one of the things that I did um, so that every screen was the exact same size and they were all square as can be is I made a very, very rudimentary jig uh, out of two um, pieces of plywood. What I did was I built one frame got it exactly the way I wanted it, square, and I wanted everyone identical to that. So I measured the inside dimensions of the two squares and cut those out on the table saw so that each, each one would be a jig in itself. And then I could, I could just frame, I could just frame around, I could just frame around it and uh, glue the pieces together, staple them up, and everything was perfectly square and even, and every, every piece, every screen was the same. That way I can interchange them with different boxes. And the one just won't be slightly out of square and it only fits this certain box. That's what I wanted to try to avoid because it's very easy uh, for that to happen. So, that's how I uh, that's how I did the screen front. Okay. Um, now I put it I put a handle on this uh, uh, reversible uh, entrance reducer here, um, so that you can take it in and out a little bit easier and turn it turn it upside down. Um, This is a winter configuration. Um, it's closed up top. Okay, you can kind of see that. It's closed up top, but we have a uh, three-eighths of an inch gap down on the bottom. Okay, uh, now if I wanted to, I can remove that uh, board. I take this out I can turn it around uh, 
<sighs> okay, and now this is a setup where we have a, a, a minimal uh, entrance at the top. This would be for um, maybe you you just installed a nuke into a 10 frame and uh, you know you're not at full strength you you don't have a ton of bees so uh, it's easier for them to defend this uh, it's a weaker little bit of a weaker colony uh, maybe you just installed a package that's another reason why you'd use that uh, small upper entrance as the as the uh, as the hive gets uh gets more uh, strength to it you know all you do is is pull this pull this out actually if this actually uh, you actually move this from the inside um, the box and I'm just doing it here but but uh, you can just turn this around and this is your uh, this is more your your winter configuration or a medium uh, uh, strength hive. And then if you if you have a honey flow and you have a, a full strength hive, um, what you'll want to do is just remove this board completely. Whoop! Put this back in actually upside down here there now you have your target this is blue which is it will be a different color from the rest of the box whether it be yellow orange green whatever it'll be a different color and that'll be a target for the bees this is your hive that's different from the one next to it which might be a green or a yellow or whatever um, but it's wide open now now the bees got full access to uh, their their entrance in the box and uh, um, okay, now I'm gonna show you how the box works at the top. Oh, also, uh, I left the front. Obviously, we've got rabbited edges here, three quarters of an inch by three eighths, three quarters of an inch by three eighths on each side. Uh, that's how I did the front. This, the back, is, I did it a little bit different. Okay, here is the. Uh, removable floor for the hive um, as you can see this is where the bees will come in and out to access uh, depending on which hole that they use um, but this removable floorboard um, will be removed in the winter time it'll be always in in place um, any other time but in the winter time when you want uh, maximum airflow into your hive that's when we uh, that's when we remove this floorboard okay now like I said I, st I store this uh, actually you just store this board out of the way there but uh, okay um, I use three quarter inch plywood, which is three and three quarter inches long. And the reason I use three and three quarter inches is because um, we have uh, the spacer. You're going to have another three quarter inch board and another three quarter inch board. So uh, you need the space to uh, to move everything back so that your your entrance is back here. Um, to make everything fit correctly. Another change that I made from the last box is I did not rabbit the back edge at all. And the reason I did that, and I, and I can show you on another box, um, is because we tend to pry uh, our hive boxes using our hive tool uh, right here and this is a pry point well if this were rabbited out right here and we just stapled straight through here and this was full, full distance 
um, you would actually be prying and putting force only on two, a couple of staples. It would be the only thing holding it up and maybe a little bit of glue. Uh, so I, I wanted to change that um, profile so that it's bearing directly on this uh, 3 8 inch piece of wood here. So I what I did was, um, and the, for the back piece, it's just a 3 quarter inch piece. I rabbited it out 3 8 of an inch here, and then I also put a rabbit inside here, and that is going to hold your, um, your back panel in place. And then I put two shims here uh, as a stopper for the back panel. And I'll show you how the back panel fits. Um, it just goes in just like that. And then I cut out, uh, you're going to have, again, either uh, butterfly clips or bent nails or whatever to hold this in place. And then you'll just take the bent nails and turn them to, uh, to open, this, open this up. Um, I haven't gotten to that part yet, but uh, I cut... Uh, I cut handles in the back. You can use this as a lift point if you if you want. Um, I also cut handles into the sides. The only thing that I want to do a little different is try to figure out a way to secure this bottom box to a deep uh, for transport so that it doesn't slide off uh, but that's how that goes I'll show you a, a still photo of the end of this uh, of this piece um, and how it uh, how it rabbits it's just a this this rabbit here is just three-eighths of an inch and then I also rabbited the backboard three-eighths of an inch right there so that it fits. I also put a little handle here. Um, you can see, so that fits in there. So I can, I can, I can... I can come back to the back here, I can open this up, I can come back and I can pull this board out, all right, I can just lay it down um, in place and just leave it there. Uh, or I can, I can take it with me too, it's, it's really up to you. Now if you're going to put fondant back here, if you're going to put fondant back here, you're going to want to have uh, this in place uh, and the reason you're going to want to have this in place and you're going to want to reduce this entrance to this or that smaller front either way is because you want the bees protected protecting this so you can avoid robbing you don't want to leave this open and then put fondant in the back uh, because you will promote uh, robbing the, the bees cannot defend an opening of that size uh, to the fondant Okay, so I just wanted to uh, to throw that out to you. All right, and then uh, here's another thing I wanted to show you. Okay, this is a paint pan, and this actually holds. A gallon of syrup actually a gallon and a quarter of syrup uh, you can fill this with straw or oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about using some sort of a uh, what they call it custom cut hammock material for uh, like filter for uh, uh, your furnace and just lay it down that way the bees can access it without drowning uh, but that's this is an just an just an idea, and like I said, uh, uh, you can use any kind of reservoir you want. But I, I like this uh, design here that uh, the bees can actually come down here, and, and as the uh, as the level drops, they they can walk along this edge here 
and access the syrup straight out of the straight out of the hive. Um, this back panel just offers so much more um, versatility to um, oops. And this is how this will be used, you know, during a, a, in an active. Well, actually, let's do this. Okay, let's say that we have a, uh, you know, an active hive uh, situation here. You know, you come back here, you unlatch it, open it up. You can pull out, you know, if you want to just uh, put some more fondant in. You can slide this out partial, pour your fondant in as needed, slide it back in, put your back in, and you've not disturbed the bees one bit. You haven't taken off the hive top, the queen isn't disturbed, nothing is disturbed. Um, that's, like I said, is another aspect. Let's say you wanted to fog your bees. Um, I don't have a hive tool here with me, so I'm just going to use this stick as an example. You can pick up your hive. You can stick your hive tool in and, uh, whoop, and pop this bottom board. Pull the bottom board out just for a minute, you can open this up, fog your, fog your hive as needed, um, you know, if you have a, one of those uh, pro vapes, you can drill your quarter inch hole back here and just stick it in there and then zap your, uh, zap your bees, now all the fog will go up, all your vapor will go up as needed. Um, when you're done, you know, you want to, you just pick this back up, slide your bottom board in, and you're good to go. So that's how that works. Uh, also, in the winter time, I showed this before. This is really difficult to do one-handed. Um, So that's what you want to do in the winter time. Just pop your boards and uh, after your fondant is done, remove it, close it up, boom, boom. You can come in the front. Uh, Here you go. Now you're ready for winter. Okay, you're closed up top. Uh, all, all you have left is a half an inch. Now if you really wanted to, uh, I left just enough gap. I can slide hardware cloth behind here and drop it down and there'll be number four hardware cloth on the back side of this opening so that uh, if you're really worried about mice. I don't know if a mouse can fit in there uh, it's only a half an inch. Um, I've seen 
videos where they can't get through a half inch by half inch but this is not half inch by half inch it's only a half an inch uh, by whatever so um, I'm not sure if a mouse can get through there or not um, okay so that's uh, that's my design in a nutshell Oh, here is um, here's a, another project that I did. These are uh, uh, nuke top and bottoms, uh, and then um, uh, just my standard ten frame top and bottoms. Uh, I I got these built. Um, I cut off the the. Um, there's no porch on these. And now these nest inside of each other, which makes for really nice, clean storage. Again, um, I've got these um, nukes and the tent frame set up so that I can, it's dual purpose for the top and the bottom. I can, I can do double two frame nukes, or I can just do a single five frame nuke for the bottom. Um, you know, each top will have uh, aluminum uh, cover on, but uh, the top and the bottom match, and that'll also be sort of an identifier for for my uh, for my bees as well. So that's another project that I was working on, and uh, and I've also made uh, half a dozen four frame nukes and uh, four, five, or six uh, five frame nukes as well so been busy uh, it's been quite a, an enjoyable experience uh, frustrating at times but uh, I enjoy doing stuff like this I honestly can't wait to to uh, to use this uh, this high bottom uh, and just to see you know I'm not expecting miracles uh, but I just want to you know see how uh, this little uh, device uh, will help me in the future uh, as, as I do my beekeeping. Uh, it can't hurt. I know that. Uh, again, you know, that, that extra space um, allows the bees to, in a hot, hot conditions, um, they can now, um, in an overcrowded state on hot days, they can now use this big space and hang out on there. Actually, in the video that I that I was I was watching um, on those hot days, they had a flow going on. Um, really hot days the bees were congregating and they were they were hanging off of these these spindles uh, in the in cone shaped you know um, and I thought that that I thought that that was pretty neat um, you know they can use that space to just um, hang out you know uh, instead of hanging out and bearding on the outside uh have you ever seen them beard at night um they're not really protected now that now it, inside the hive they're actually protected which can only be benefit to your bees so anyways um i hope i hope this was informative for you this project is not for everyone um you know, I don't think everybody. I don't think you need it, um, but it's an experiment for me, and uh, I honestly can't wait to use it. So, if you got any comments or questions, you know, leave them below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you do subscribe. Uh, you know, I try to. I, I wing most of my videos I don't I don't have a script uh, so I tend to uh, stutter a little bit 
uh, trying to get my thoughts, so I apologize if I don't come out and say uh, succinctly, as I should, what I'm trying to explain to you. But uh, I hope you still get something out of it, nonetheless. So, until next time, happy beekeeping.